Hi, this is Marina from the YouTube channel Inspire Me To Be Healthy. Today we have Lauren Lockwood with us. He's going to be talking about practical issues with B12. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Marina. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the last interview that we made a couple of days ago in which you told us some things about B12. And um, uh, now I would like to ask you some more practical things. Uh, first of all, what are the typical symptoms of B12 deficiency? Well, the, the symptoms of B12 deficiency range widely. So there's a number of different things that can occur. And it's important to understand that none of them indicate a B12 deficiency by themselves. So I don't want someone listening to think, oh, I've got that. I must have a B12 problem. Not necessarily. Um, they can range from weakness, uh, tingling in your feet, nervousness, difficulty swallowing, fatigue, decreased blood clotting, dandruff, memory issues, sore or very red tongue, very pale skin. Any of these things can occur as a result of B12 deficiency. And if somebody really has symptoms B12 deficiency, do you recommend any supplements as the first thing to do just to help him or herself or something else? Well, I, I, think, I think the first step, if you're noticing you know, any one of these symptoms would probably not be enough to alarm someone. Uh, you know, I, I would, let me say it this way. Um, I wouldn't be alarmed. If you, know, if you have any one of those symptoms, that could be caused by a number of different factors. If you've got a number of those symptoms, then you might want to at least go get tested to see what your, your uh, B12 levels are. Now, the problem with that, so a, a blood test can give you a sense. I mean, if your circulating levels are low, that could be a problem, but it's not necessarily a problem. Remember that meat eaters with much higher circulating levels tend to have the same actual B12 deficiency problems. So the, the first step would probably be to, to get it checked out clinically and um, go find someone that really understands, you know, as well as possible, that understands B12 and can give you a good sense of it. Again, the, the, the simple blood test alone is, might give you an indication coupled with a lot of symptoms, but alone wouldn't tell you that much by itself either. So that would be the first place to start, I think, would be to go, um, go get some testing done and see what's actually going on. If, if it looks like there really is a severe problem, then some supplement, some supplementing might be in order. Now, the reason I hesitate is, again, I want you to remember, I, this is critically important and something a lot of people don't understand, is that our bodies are governed by the laws of nature, including the law of efficiency. And the law of efficiency says every species is always trying to get the most benefit for the least amount of effort. So when we give the body an unnatural source of something in the form of a supplement, what we're doing is we're making it ultimately, over time, the body will become dependent on that source and less able to get its needs met naturally as it was intended to. So uh, you know, I, I wouldn't rush to supplementation or, you know, I would maybe use supplementation in the belief there was an issue temporarily on a short-term basis to try to correct the problem. And, you know, the, the good news is, is that we can store B12 for a long time, as long as 20 years or more. And so, um, you know, even if someone isn't consuming or isn't able to assimilate what they need, it can take a long time for a problem to surface. If there is a problem, it can be remedied relatively quickly uh, and isn't necessarily something someone wants or needs to do on an ongoing basis over a long time. I would, I would always hesitate to do that because the last thing you want to do is create a situation where your body's dependent on something that's unnatural. I mean, um, I, I would point out that in the vast majority of cases of deficiency, whether we're talking about B12 or we're talking about any other deficiency that might arise, it's usually not because someone's not consuming enough or has enough in the body. It's usually because the body is unable to access or use what's already there. And B12 is, is unusual in a couple of ways. Uh, first of all, it's unlike 
all the rest of the B vitamins, which are available from plant sources, from the plants themselves, B12 is not really readily available from plant sources because it's always manufactured by bacteria. So it's available from plant sources to the extent that that substance was taken from the ground and not had, you know, not washed, for instance. You know, I, I eat right from my garden all the time and don't wash the food. I might brush the dirt off if there is some, but otherwise I just eat the food. And that ensures that I'm getting any B12 that might be there on the surface of the food. But in many cases, um, what's going on is an inability to properly use what, what's there. And that can happen for a number of reasons. So I think, you know, the, 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 for me, while again, supplementation short term might make sense, you know, the, the next thing that I would do is I would find a way to have my cellular hydration tested and interpreted by someone who actually understands it. And I'm going to point out that I believe there are very few people who do because the people who read these devices are typically trusting the information that comes with them. For instance, um, we use a, a fairly high and sophisticated device by a Japanese company called Tanita. Um, this is bioimpedance analysis. And it's, you know, it's, it's supposed to be very, very accurate, but the device is giving you an overall hydration percentage of the body. So, for instance, um, if you weigh 100 pounds, Marina, it, you know, it might say that your body is 70% water. Now, what does that mean? Well, unfortunately, it, that alone doesn't really, isn't really very useful. And the reason it's not is because what all that's telling us is that 70% of your weight, in, in the case, you know, if my numbers are accurate, I'm just making them up for anyone listening. I don't know these numbers, but if, if my numbers were accurate, that would mean that your, your body was, you know, 70 pounds of your body weight was from water. But in order to actually understand that, we would have to know how much body fat you have, and we, then we would have to calculate what percentage is that 70 pounds of your body's lean mass, because there is no real water in body fat. And, and the reason this is important is because... I believe that the vast majority of B12 deficiency problems, and as you may know, there, there are a number of, of um, well-known raw vegans that supplement with B12. And, you know, I've always said, if you need supplements of any kind, something in the body is not working properly, okay? Um, and, you know, it's funny because most raw vegans assume, especially people who are consuming a high fruit-based diet, assume they're well hydrated. But I've measured more than a 1,000 raw vegans over the last eight years and have not found that to be the case. What I found to be the case is that most of them are pretty significantly dehydrated. And when, when the body is, is systemically dehydrated that way, which is true for over 99% of the people we've measured, one of the things that happens is the stomach lining, which is supposed to be mucus, a mucus layer, it's not, it's not healthy. It's not complete. It doesn't protect the stomach the way it's designed to because that mucus is made of water mostly. And so uh, when the body is, is chronically dehydrated, a number of things break down, including that protection for the stomach. That's important because when that mucus protective mucus layer isn't there, the body needs to reduce its production of hydrochloric acid. And you may or not, may not be aware, but low stomach acid is a huge problem. You know, people are taking antacids thinking they have too much stomach acid when the fact is they don't have enough. Their problems are typically not caused by excess acid. They're caused by the presence of undigested proteins because of acid that's already too low. And one of the reasons it's too low is because the body is making less hydrochloric acid on purpose because in the absence of a healthy mucous membrane layer, a, a healthy normal, uh, healthy, not normal, a healthy hydrochloric acid content would digest the stomach so without the protection. So the body purposely reduces the hydrochloric acid content in order to protect the stomach. But that means that nothing's digested very well and B12 can't be assimilated in that environment. There won't be intrinsic factor in that environment. 
And so I believe it comes back to hydration. Hydration really is, in, in my perspective, single most important piece. Well, the first thing someone could do, if this, you know, th this is really true for anybody, but especially for someone who's already having a problem with B12, one of the steps would be to start consuming exclusively high water content foods. And that means nothing dehydrated, no dried fruit, nothing that comes out of your dehydrator, um, nothing with salt, vinegar, spices, uh, culinary herbs, because these things all take water out of the body. For anyone who's still consuming alcohol or caffeine, none of those things, because those things are diuretics and they force your body to lose water. Um, you know, these, even, even bananas, which, you know, again, there's some people out there that seem to, you know, to worship the banana. The banana is just another fruit. There's, you know, it, it has a wonderful array of nutrients, but it's also significantly lower in water than some of the other fruits available. 75% in a banana, 95% in watermelon or papaya. And that's a huge difference. That, tw that 20 points of 75 is significant. We're talking about, uh, what, roughly 30% or so. So consume the foods that are highest in water content because that's ultimately how we're going to get the body hydrated. Understand that getting hydrated doesn't happen by drinking more water, and especially not by drinking more water quickly. You know, guzzling water and drinking so that your pee is clear, which some people are out there saying, doesn't do anything for your level of cellular hydration. It just ensures that you have to pee a lot more because the water is just running right through your system. Indeed, fasting is the single most effective thing that I know of because we've seen over and over again that people with deficiencies of virtually any kind eliminate those deficiencies while fasting. And the reason why is because in most cases, for, I mean, obviously, if someone is living on nothing but McDonald's, if, if that's all they're eating is junk food, they might have some, some deficiencies because of the lack of nutrition in their food. But most people are consuming all the nutrients they need. They're simply not able to get them. And that's, that's you know, the answer in that case is not to consume more in the form of supplements or better, more concentrated food or superfoods. The answer there is to simply allow the body to begin to work better by, by cleaning itself and becoming more efficient so that it's able to use what's already there. And we, so we see this over and over again. When, while people are fasting, consuming nothing, their deficiencies begin to disappear. And that would be the first step. It's also the most important step to getting hydrated. So long term, to address deficiency problems, again, that actually requires getting the body fully hydrated. So in both cases, the answer is yes. Fasting is the single most powerful and beneficial thing that people can do. Yeah. Well, thank you for this. If people want to reach you, how can they do that? You can go to www.tanglewoodwellnesscenter.com. You're welcome to find me on Facebook, Lauren Lockman, and, and you might enjoy uh, my videos on my YouTube channel, which is also under my name, Lauren Lockman.